Hello stampers, this is Carrie Vicanti with Stampiphany, a great stamp and idea. Today we're going to do a flip card. All the instructions will be down below. We're going to start with an 8.5 by 5.5 piece of cardstock and we're going to score it at 2, 2 and 3 fourths, and 5 and 7 eighths. And this is sped up just to make it a little faster because I am really slow when I stamp. <laughs> so basically we're going to take the Eastern Palace dies and we're going to die cut this cardstock and as you can see here I'm putting it towards the top and I'm only putting one petal in between the two score marks right there the two inch one and the two and three fourths then I'm going to take some washi tape and kind of get it de-sticked a little bit de-stickify however you want to say it and that's going to hold my die on it so I can run it through my big shot I do that sometimes with the washi tape if I am afraid it might uh, tear my paper when I take it off. And the great thing about these dies is that you can mix and match uh, and make just lots of different patterns. So once you have that run through, you're going to take that off of your cardstock. And the color of the cardstock here is uh, dapper denim, I believe. Again, all the stuff will be down below, the sizes and the supplies. Once that's done, that's all we're going to do right now to that card base. But since I have some washi tape on there, I'm going to go ahead and add some middle pieces to this. And in this particular die set, you'll have like a medium ring, and then you'll have like a middle ring. And there's two different kinds, so you can mix and match those. And this washi tape works great in keeping these dies together. So I'm going to take some of my gold foil cardstock, and I'm going to use some of our uh, sticky sheets. We have some sticky sheets in our catalog this year, and I'm so glad we brought them back. I've been a demonstrator for about 19 years, and we used to have them, and I missed it when we, we said goodbye to them for a little while. I'm glad they're back because when you're doing uh, projects like this, it does make it really easy, especially with this gold foil. So I'm going to put that over the top of my gold foil. I don't really need to stick it down onto the gold foil because it doesn't really matter where it cuts it out on the gold foil as long as the whole thing's cut out. And as you saw, I went back and forth once. This is an intricate die, and it, the sticky sheet makes this gold foil just a little bit thicker. So running it back and forth a little bit kind of makes sure that everything gets cut. Now that that's done, I am going to die cut another little piece that's going to go on the inside of our flip card. And that's just going to be on the Eastern Palace uh, Designer Series paper on the Fresh Fig striped cardstock. Of course, you could use whatever cardstock or Designer Series paper, anything that you would like to use for this, whatever you have hanging around your house. And make sure when you're using the dies, you just kind of peel them off carefully. These dies are meant to work in a couple different ways. One of them is you can just leave them. They don't cut completely out, and that is so you can leave it there and just flip up the petals, or you can cut them out, which I'll show you how to do that later. We also need a little another accent, a little another medallion, and this one I'm going to stamp first. And then I'm going to stamp another little image on the inside. This stamp set's really fun because it comes with all these little different elements that you can use and kind of combine in different ways to make really cool designs. It kind of reminds me of Zen drawing, really. Or the mandala, I think it's called. I might have that name wrong, but forgive me if I do. Um... Another thing with these dies is you get an outline die and then just the petal die. If I just used the petal die, it would cut petals, but they wouldn't be completely cut out, just enough to lift up and add texture. Or you can see what I'm doing here. I'm adding the outline with the petals, and it'll cut the whole thing out as a piece. Now, I'm kind of using my paper piercer here to kind of move it because my hands are kind of sticky. I constantly have glue on them. That's just how it goes when you're a paper crafter. And so I'm just kind of using that to position it right where I want it to go. And again, I'm going to hold it in place with some washi tape. And of course, I'm using my magnetic platform, which makes it a little bit easier. And my plates, as you can see, are really well worn and they're starting to get a little bit warped. So that's kind of why you saw me turn that over. I was trying to get the die as close to the magnetic platform as possible. So now that I have that all uh, die cut out, I'll just peel that washi tape off and just get that paper out of there very carefully. And I just have this adorable little medallion that it die cut. And those little petals on that will lift up if I want them to. Now here's the part where we need to kind of cut this apart and you can see where I'm taking my paper snips and going under the petals and I'm doing that to get as close to the uh, score mark there as I can. Uh, I just felt when I was going around cutting it that was the best way to get down in there and, and get there close. And don't worry about the little white pieces you see when I peel my sticky strip off 
that uh, most of those little white pieces that are inlaid right there will come right off. That's just the backing of my, my sticky paper. So I'm going around my designer series paper and again doing the same thing, just cutting off the excess paper. Now we're going to do something a little different with the card base. We don't want to cut all of our little pieces out because that will mean it'll cut it out and it won't be a flip card anymore. So before I do that, I'm just going to quickly push all the little uh, holes out to make sure those are done. You can also use your die brush if you want to. I was just frankly too lazy to get mine out. Sorry. <laughs> so now that we have those done, um, I'm just going to clip just some of them. Not the ones in the middle there, but just the ones on the sides. So by leaving the ones in the middle, that's my anchor. And so that'll keep my medallion on my cardstock. So when I when I bend those when I fold the cardstock right there, it'll flip for me, and I'll show you that a little later. Now you don't have to do this, but I wanted to add some designer series paper right there, just to layer on the inside of the card. And this again is from that same designer series pack, Eastern Palace, I believe. It's all a beautiful suite that's in the new catalog, and I just I really like it. At first I wasn't sure, but the more I've used it, the more I've really just fallen in love with it. I'm just taking a pencil here and tracing, and now what I'm going to do is take that same die that we've been using, and I'm going to die cut that. And what I did is I made sure it went right up, just right up to the pencil, almost just a smidgey over the pencil, so I didn't have to erase any pencil lines. Then you trim that out, and now this is perfectly cut to fit right inside my card. You can see here's my sample. What I'm doing here is flipping this over to make sure that I get the right elements on the right side of the cardstock, or the correct side, I should say. So this is actually, it looks like the back of my card base, which it kind of is. And that is where your gold medallion is going to go. And so what I did is I just laid that down after I peeled the backing off, and I'm just going to, I wouldn't say pinch, but just kind of use my fingers to line up the little petals there so that they're all lined up nicely. You do want to make sure that they are lined up nicely so you don't have anything stopping your card from folding back and forth. And then now we're going to put this fresh fig on the back of that. And this little trick, I'm using my silicone mat to put my tape on because I didn't want to use liquid glue. And you put that on there and just rub the excess tape or adhesive out of there and then you can't even tell. This is a great cheater way to do it and it won't stick to the silicone mat which is great. If you don't have one of those I highly recommend you have one on hand. It comes in handy for lots of different things. Now at this point I had forgotten there's a strip of paper that goes under that and I will figure that out later. I was having a super really off day. I had a lot of interruptions and I was just bound and determined. This is like the second or third time I tried to film this card. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm folding my card over, and then you fold the second part back. Hopefully this makes sense uh, when you go to make your card, but if it flips like that, you did it right. You've got a green light. And so now that I have that all ready um, to go there, you can see my gold's on, and I've got my purple on, and then that part right there just folds in. And this is about the time I think I realized, oopsie doodles, I forgot to put that strip. And you don't, I kind of felt that you do need to have a strip of paper there just to reinforce the cardstock because as it's going back and forth, it does weaken that cardstock just a little bit. So I felt by putting some designer series paper here, it kind of strengthened that one little area there of the card. Because uh, I did do a couple samples and it did get weakened there and I was worried it might tear. So I thought this might help it. So I just put my fresh fig piece back on there, and now we're going to fold that back up. You can see how that's folded in half. Those will peek out the back, and then that piece folds back the other direction, and that is the front of your card. So now we're going to add the special piece that we cut where we trace with the pencil, if you remember. And I'm just going to put that on there. And I did, again, I was having an off day, and I realized I need this just a little bit smaller. So I went and trimmed it and then put it on the inside, and then it fit perfectly. So that is the insider card, and I want to put something here off to the right. Again, this is all your choice. If you'd want to skip this part, you could, but I wanted a, a little spot to add a sentiment later if I wanted to, so I'm just using another element from the stamp set. So it's this little dotted circle, and just stamp that a couple times. And then I did get some on my mat, so I wiped that off with a baby wipe. And then now I'm just going to add that to the inside of my card.
And it is dark cardstock, so I do, when I'm making cards, card bases that are dark like this, I do like to add the vanilla or white or something inside to make it easier to see, unless I'm using a, a gel pen or something. So this panel right here actually is going to show on the front when the receiver first sees the card. So I'm just using one another elements on the card to just add some visual interest to the front flap there, that little flap. So I was kind of running short on time. I had I had some stuff. I think I needed to run a kid somewhere. I have teenagers, so some drive, some don't. So I'm a chauffeur. <laughs> so what I did is added a sentiment. It's just thank you with some dots. And that circle right there, the green one, is just a layer of DSP designer series paper and some vanilla. And then this is our little medallion that I showed you how to make earlier. And then some gold are some of our gold stickers embellishments. These are great. I was trying to find what sheet I got that circle from and then I found it. There's just a lot of really uh, stickers on these sheets. You get a lot a lot of bang for your buck on that pack. So then that's how I did all the elements in this little middle gem here. I felt the middle needed something and we have these new little glitter enamel dots. So I thought that worked out really well to put that in the middle there. There's just a lot of really pretty elements with this card. I was really happy with it when I got done with it. And so now I wanted to make a little belly band to kind of keep it closed. And that's just again some more of our, uh, it's gold foil striped designer series paper. It's really pretty. I just if you can order some of this paper to see it live, you'll love it. It's really pretty in real life. So I'm just taking some gold narrow ribbon here. And I originally thought I might tie like just a square knot right here and you could definitely do that if you wanted to but I felt it might be easier to add my tassel and my bow um, if I didn't do a square knot. I wanted to kind of cut down on the bulk a little bit so you'll see me I'm gonna take a glue dot here and I like to pick them up with my paper piercer and my my paper snips. I'm just gonna put a glue dot on the end of my ribbon there and just put that down on the paper. I love glue dots for this purpose. They work really great for this. And so I'm basically going to do a cheater bow. That's it folks. You found the secret. I'm doing a cheater bow. So I just tack that down and now I'm just going to take that and we're going to add a glue dot with the tassel. That's how I did that belly band there. And I'm just going to put that straight on the ring just kind of fold it over a little bit with my scissors and then put that right on top of my ribbon. Now I'm going to just take two loops, just make two little loops with your ribbon and tie them in a knot is all you have to do. And then I just adjust them and trim them off and that's how I did my cheater bow. I, sometimes when I try to tie a bow out of the ribbon that's already wrapped around or whatever, it doesn't always go the direction I want it to go. So this is a great way if you really want your bow a specific way, plus it cut down on some bulk. So this is our little flip card. You could pretty much make a flip card almost out of everything, uh, any shape almost. Give it a try um, and comment below and let me know how you like this card. I hope you have a great day and thanks for stopping by today.